الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله أحمد الله رب العالمين حمد عباده الشاكرين الذاكرين حمدا يوافي نعم الله علينا ويكافئ مزيده وصلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هداه All praises are due to Allah the creator, the cherisher and the sustainer of this universe and may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad and his descendants and his followers uh, dear respected uh, brothers and sisters actually yes my uh, original topic was about being merciful uh, or uh, the Islam being merciful to women but actually I changed the topic when I saw a lot of women here and I thought that it could have been better that there could have been a female speaker actually and I switched the topic to being merciful to oneself the first thing that that comes to someone's mind when he comes to a conference uh, uh, that is entitled uh, mercy that all the talks will be about the mercy of Allah which as you heard several times today that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended only 1% of it on this earth and kept 99% uh, for us to be treated with on the day of judgment or we will hear about the mercy of the Muslim towards people and towards animals <laughs> because of course all of us want to go to heaven and as we heard today also several times, and Dr. Muhammad al actually was the first one to quote this hadith, man la yarham nas la yarhamullah. And this hadith, there is an, um, it is authentic. Actually, there is a consensus between scholars, muttafaqun alayh, consensus between scholars of hadith that on its authenticity. But actually, I am using a different hadith that says, innahu man la yarham la yurham. And also there is a consensus between scholars of hadith on the authenticity of this hadith. The hadith says, literally, the one who does not treat with mercy will not be treated with mercy. And this hadith does not say treat people with mercy. It just says the one who does not treat with mercy. Man la yarham, la yurham. And here this actually includes ar-rahma bin nafs, as also Dr. Muhammad al Dubai mentioned, ar-rahma bin nafs. But I see this one more general actually because the Prophet وسلم, also talked about being kind to your own self, being merciful to your own self. And when the wife of, uh, I think, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As came uh, complaining that he is too hard on himself, praying all night long and all the time like uh, uh, in a state of remembrance of Allah, he, he told him, your wife has rights upon you and your guests have rights upon you and he also told him there, there are rights on yourself for yourself so there are rights towards your own self by giving it time to rest by giving it time for also entertainment and so on and here we need to talk about nafs because a nafs is a combination between a physical being and a non-physical being. The physical being, the body, which we all the time like uh, giving nutrition. We all had good nutrition today and we're still having more uh, nutrition, water. And maybe uh, if you open my bag, you will find also medication. I have gout, so I have also medication for gout. I have influenza, maybe I have any, any things for influenza. I have uh, uh, things like that. So we, all this is caring about the body. The, uh, the part of us which is less important because the most important part is a ruh the non-physical being, which is al-ruh and al-qalb. If my non-physical being departs my body right now, will you stay seated in your seats looking at me? No. You will leave. Why not? I'm still here. Father Solomon is still here. No, I'm not here anymore. I left. The most important part of me left the soul. It's not that body at all. But the problem happens, and the unbalance happens in the life of the Muslim when he gives more attention to the less important 
We're all the time eating, drinking, looking in the mirror every now and then, every day looking in the mirror, going up the scale, going down the scale, checking the weight, checking all these things, pressure. But who gives this soul and this heart the nutrition that it needs? Neglecting the rights of the soul will lead to devastating things, actually. Because this body, because when you neglect the, the rights of the soul, you don't give it the nutrition or the medication, it will actually become weak and it will shrink. And here the body becomes stronger than your soul. And this body has systems, a reproductive system, a, uh, a stomach and a digestive system. And these systems of the body, they have needs. And these needs of the systems of the body are called desires. So if you weaken your soul and your soul shrinks, then the needs that you have in your body and the desires will become in control and they will be driving this body, driving your nafs. So what you need to do is we need to be merciful to our nafs by strengthening our souls and strengthening our, uh, uh, our hearts. How to do that? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says, in هذا القرآن مأدوبة الله. This Quran is the banquet of Allah. So it's nutrition. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the Quran in the Quran, uh, in the Quran saying, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ So Allah said that this Quran, some of it is a medication, is a cure. At the same time, we need also the medication of the nafs, which is not necessarily only in the Quran. Anything about the dhikr, dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah, uh, let it be the Quran, let it be the salah, let it be the adhkar that we say. We need to use it the right way in order to strengthen our soul. Let me tell you a small, it's not a joke actually, it's something that actually literally happened in my village. I'm from a village in Egypt in a part called the Sa'id, where people, um, everybody makes jokes about us. And one of my uh, relatives is an ENT doctor. And a patient came to him complaining from a pain in the ear. So he checked his ear, he found that he has inflammation in his ear. So he gave him uh, antibiotic. He gave him, a, he should take five milligrams capsule of antibiotic every six uh, hours. The man came back to him after two days complaining that the, the, the pain is still the same and it's not getting better any, uh, at all. So he told him, just continue taking the antibiotic. You need to take it for about seven days. He said, no, I can't take anymore. He said, why? He said, Allah, I can't take anymore. He told him, come here, let me check your ear. He checked his ear. He found that he is stuffing one capsule in his ear every six hours. <laughs> I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this because many of us read the Quran every day. Many of us actually are huffad of the Quran. They, they, they know the Quran by heart and we do the remembrance of Allah, but still depressed, but still unhappy. It's because we don't deal with this dhikrullah the way Allah told us. Allah told us how to deal with the Quran. The Quran tells us, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ A blessed book that I have descended on you so that you may reflect upon its meanings. So the, the reason why Allah descended the Quran so that we can listen to it or read it and understand it and reflect upon the meanings. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. It is me who descended the Quran, the dhikr which is me, the Quran here, and I am the one who will preserve it. We all the time focus on hifz, on studying it by heart, on memorizing it by heart, but not necessarily understanding it. The only book in the world which is read without understanding is the Quran. And I challenge you now to give me one name of one book which is read without understanding except the Quran. This is our contribution to the Quran. This is what we made. So this is the problem. It's exact. That's why we read it and still, or read it heedlessly without any understanding and still it doesn't 
uh, cure the, the depression. It doesn't cure, it doesn't relieve. Why? Because we are doing exactly like this villager by putting the, uh, using the capsules the wrong way. That's exactly what we're doing. When we read the Quran heedlessly, when we pray heedlessly, when our adhkar are done heedlessly. If I uh, uh, drop this uh, uh, bottle of water on uh, the sheikh's uh, 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 clothes and I, I spill the water on him, what should I say? I should apologize. How can I apologize to him? By telling him sorry. How about telling him sorry like that 100 times? Sorry, 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 like that. Will he think that I'm really sorry? Does he think that I'm regretting? Or I, is, will he become more intimidated and provoked? That's exactly what we do with Allah when we say Astaghfirullah, 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 heedlessly 100 times like that. But the Prophet ﷺ taught us how to do Istighfar with emotions, with a lot of feelings of regret by saying what he called Sayyid al Istighfar. Allahumma anta Rabbi, O Allah, you are my Lord. Khalaqtani, you created me. Wa ana abduk, or wa ana amatuk, and I'm your slave servant. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika mastata'at, and I stick to my pledge and my promise to you as much as I can. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at, I seek refuge with you from the evil that I have committed. Abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhanbi. I acknowledge your blessings upon me and I admit my sins. Faghfir li, so forgive me. For no one forgives sins except you. So you see, it only one time, but with a lot of feelings of regret, a lot of feelings of hope that Allah will forgive me. This is what Allah wants from us. And I believe that if we are not merciful to ourselves, we cannot show mercy to others. Because if you really, if you, if you're, uh, if you're uh, thirsty. You have to reach out for water so that you can have water and give others water. You cannot give others mercy if you are not merciful to yourself. And this can only happen by becoming close to the source of mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khairan, barakallahu fikum.